What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports back again with another one. Todd DeBuff, president of Top Rank Boxing, saying, Not so fast, my friend. Wilder Fury 3 may not take place in Las Vegas due to the coronavirus pandemic. He said the fight might not happen in Las Vegas or anywhere on the West Coast, you know, California or the East Coast, New York. Because of the pandemic coronavirus, they'll be looking to uh, possibly move that fight to other locations in the United States or possibly out of the country. Now, I'm going to list a few uh, locations that I think could be possibilities for Fury Wilder 3. Number one is Dallas, Texas. Big D. Big D. Last seen hosting a uh, big fight between Errol Spence Jr., and uh, Mikey Garcia fight uh, had well over 47,000 fans in attendance for that fight. The fight did good numbers on pay-per-view. And uh, that could be a possible uh, destination for the trilogy. Now, the only thing that I say that might cancel that uh, fight happening in Dallas is uh, that fight's going to uh, be it's gonna be another pretty big fight happening a month before, from what I'm hearing. Uh, Canelo Alvarez versus Triple G. The trilogy, two trilogies happening in September and October uh, could uh, also take place in Dallas Cowboys Stadium, known as AT&T Stadium. Uh, that fight could possibly happen there. I'm hearing that's, I'm actually hearing that Dallas is the front runner to host uh, Canelo Alvarez versus Triple G, three. Now, if that's the case, then I think that rules out uh, that as a venue for uh, Wilder Fury three, which would take place you know, a few weeks after that fight. So I can't see that venue hosting two major fights like that in, uh, in close proximity of each other. So that might kind of kill that as far as a potential destination. Now, we can go down there, look down, down south from Dallas and uh, go to San Antonio. That could be a possible destination. You know, that's a hotbed of boxing. A lot of boxing fans in the city of San Antonio, the Alamo City. You know, Canelo Alvarez uh, fought a unification fight at a uh, junior middleweight against Austin Trout in the Alamo Dome. They had over 40,000 fans in attendance for that fight. That could be a possible destination. We can go back a little further when uh, Pernell Sweet Pete Whitaker took on the legend Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. in the Alamo Dome, and they had over 60,000, 70,000 fans in attendance for that fight. So San Antonio could be a, a possible destination for Fury Wilder three. In a dark horse city, Houston, Texas, could be another possibility to host that fight. Now, uh, Canelo Alvarez fought there uh, around three or four years ago, if I'm not mistaken. You know, might have been a little further back then, but he definitely fought in Minute Maid Park against uh, James Kirkland out of Austin, Texas. Had a, a highlight reel knockout of uh, Austin uh, of uh, James Kirkland in that fight too, in front of 39,000 fans in attendance at Minute Maid Park who hosts the Houston Astros, the 2017 World Series champion. Now, um, just recently, man, late 2019, uh, Jaime McGee, up-and-coming fighter out of uh, Mexico, uh, took on Dennis Hogan in a fight that I attended uh, in the Toyota Center. And that fight had a raucous, very enthusiastic crowd there, man. It probably had around 12,000, 12, 13,000 in attendance for that fight. So Houston is a uh, quiet as kept is a... Is a very uh, enthusiastic uh, boxing city, man. They really like to turn out for uh, big-time fighters, man. So that could be a, a, a possible destination for uh, Fury Wilder 3. Now, I'm going to leave the state of Texas and go to another city that I think is a new hotbed of boxing, man. Recently hosted uh, Javante Tate Davis versus uh, Yorkers Gamboa at State Farms Arena. Uh, right outside Atlanta, Georgia, I think. I don't think it was in Atlanta, or it might have either been in Atlanta or right outside Atlanta. But basically, inside Atlanta, had a big crowd down there, either a sellout or near sellout uh, for that fight as uh, Javante Davis uh, stopped uh, Jokic Gamboa in the 12th round. So that's a new hotbed of uh, city in, in, as far as uh, new on the scene in, in, from, uh, in, in uh, boxing. And uh, I think uh, in particular the PBC and Al Heyman are going to be looking to stage future fights there in Atlanta, Georgia. And, and quiet as kept, Atlanta, Georgia hosted um, Evander Holyfield's uh, first title offense, fresh off an of upset victory over Mike Tyson. He fought Burt Cooper in the Georgia Dome. Had, uh, I think he had around 50,000, 60,000 fans in attendance for that fight. So Atlanta has shown in the past that they'll come out for a big-time uh, boxing match 
And this certainly would classify as a big time boxing match with uh, Tyson Fury versus uh, Deontay Wilder, the trilogy. So that could be a possible uh, destination for the fight. Another one is Memphis, Tennessee. I know you probably say, wait a minute, Memphis, Tennessee? The city known for the blues, the city known for the barbecue. What they know about boxing over there in uh, Memphis, Tennessee? Well, you, you know, if you don't remember, if you're not a boxing historian like myself, you would uh, understand that uh, when Lance Lewis fought Mike Tyson, that fight took place in Memphis, Tennessee, the pyramid. Now, the fight was supposed to take place, I think, in Las Vegas, but they had a press conference. I don't know if it was on the West Coast or the East Coast, but wherever it was, it was a big melee. End up getting into a big altercation between um, Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis, and I think Lennox Lewis' bodyguard. It resulted in um, <laughs> Mike Tyson biting Lennox Lewis on the leg, and uh, Lennox Lewis threatened to sue him, and and all that melee that uh, happened during that press conference and a lot of other uh, actions that Mike Tyson was doing before that press conference led to Mike Tyson having a hard time getting a bison, boxing license. Here comes Memphis, Tennessee. They was one of the uh, few cities, the few states that would offer uh, Mike Tyson a boxing license, and that's why that fight ended up there. And uh, Memphis, uh, Tennessee is, uh, came out in big numbers for that fight. So that could be a, a possible destination due to, you know, due to uh, historical purposes, hosting a big time title fight between Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson, which Lennox Lewis was able to knock out Mike Tyson and secure his legacy as the best heavyweight of that era. There was a big debate going on between Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis. And let's full stake this claim as the best heavyweight of that era and one of the best heavyweights of all time as he's able to knock out Iron Mike Tyson. You know, no matter that Mike Tyson was uh, past his prime, past his best days, Lance Lewis did what he can't, what he, he should have did with a guy that wasn't at his best. He ended up knocking out Mike Tyson. And after uh, beating Holyfield in a rematch and having a draw in the first fight that everybody named Mama thought he won and to beat Holyfield in the first fight, he was able to defeat him in the second fight in a very, very competitive fight. So after the uh, Mike Tyson knockout, that secured uh, Lance Lewis' legacy. So that could be a possible uh, destination for uh, Wilder Fury 3. Now, if we go outside the country, I can't really name too many places. I know a lot of people say, what about the UK? The problem with that is Holyfield, my bad, um, Tyson Fury walked away from uh, securing a license with the uh, the BBB of C, which is the head honcho boxing commission in the UK. You know, he walked away from uh, trying to pursue a license with that, with that commission and uh, went over and fought uh, Wilder in a rematch, knocked Wilder out, and uh, I think he did an interview not too long ago. Uh, I don't know if it was a radio interview or a YouTube interview, but he ended up on YouTube, and he basically said a fight between him and uh, Anthony Joshua would take place in the good old USA. And the reason why he said that was he, you know, he he's not he's no longer in pursuit of a, a UK boxing license, a BBB of C boxing license, due to the fact that he thinks uh, number one. He he has doubts he's that he'll ever be able to secure one because I think they was reopening an investigation in 2015 uh, and he failed the PED test. He got a a, a farmer to uh, tell the commission that uh, the reason why he failed that test was because he ate some boar meat. He was supposed to pay the guy allegedly. He was supposed to pay the farmer sixty thousand dollars for his testimony, but never paid him. So now the farmer is feeling a certain type of way, and he was going back to the commission saying that he was paid to lie on Tyson Fury's behalf that he didn't eat, eat, eat no boy meat and uh, he was just lying and uh, because he was promised cash. He was promised $60,000 in cash for his uh, fake uh, lying testimony. Now he's ready to tell the quote unquote truth this time. So with all that being said, Fury walked away from a pursuit of the uh, license with the UK Boxing Commission and uh, he said in the interview that he's not fighting uh, Anthony Joshua, the, the cash cow in the UK, one of the biggest uh, names in boxing. He's not fighting him in the UK. So I think that kind of cancels out the UK uh, hosting that fight. So if I had to go outside the country, maybe, maybe we'll look at a venue like Toronto, Canada, the Sky Dome, where the Toronto Blue Jays play. Maybe they could put that fight there. Now, I don't think the uh, Sky Dome ever hosted a boxing match. Uh, maybe you could bring that to my attention uh if they had a fight there, I know they haven't had a big time fight there. I know that for a fact. They haven't had a big time fight. Now they had some good fighters come out of Canada. Uh, David Lemieux, 
He held the uh, middleweight title uh, before he was beat by uh, Triple G in a fight that took place in, uh, I think it was Madison Square Garden, New York, as he was uh, outclassed in that fight. Adonis uh, Stevenson, who knocked out Chad Dawson and became the undisputed light heavyweight champion. If not the undisputed, he held most of the titles. I think maybe Sergey Kovalev held one of the belts, but he was the ring magazine recognized number one light heavyweight in the world by defeating Chad Dawson. He fought out of Canada. Um, what's the boy uh, that fought, uh, fought uh, defeated Chad Dawson, took his belt before uh, Donald Stevens? He came out of Canada. Uh, what's his boy name? John Pascal. He's a, he fights out of Canada. Now, he has an interim uh, WBC uh, light heavyweight title right now. He's, he upset, uh, the, uh, he upset uh, what's the guy's name? He upset the guy. Uh, the fight was big time fighting the Barclays Stadium. It was up, one of the up, bigger upsets in 2019. And he just got through fighting uh, John Pascal. He just got through fighting Badu Jack. And that fight was very, very close, very, very competitive. I think uh, John Pascal won a split decision over Badu Jack. I think it was. A lot of people thought Badu Jack won that fight. It was very close, very competitive. I think Badu Jack landed more punches, but the hardest shots were landed by John Pascal. So he fight. He fights out of Canada. So Canada is uh has some some big time fighters come out of the uh, Canada. So that could be a possible destination uh for that fight there if you want to take the fight out the, out of, outside of the United States of America. Uh. Leave me leave your comments in the comment section though. Uh, what you think about these uh, possible uh, venues that I've just mentioned in this video? Or uh, you, if you got some better, if you think you got some uh, other venues that you, maybe uh, that could possibly host that fight, uh, list them in the comment section and let me know what you think. Uh, but uh, right now, everything is up in the air due to this coronavirus, so we don't know how things will be looking in the next two or three months. But it obviously probably by the, by around about June. You know, it's when they'll start be looking to start ramping up to promotion for this fight. So, you know, we'll see what uh, Las Vegas, uh, how they're looking at that time, and how uh, New York looking. Uh, I kind of really doubt New York uh, will have any kind of sporting event the rest of this year, man. Just me guessing. I'm not no, obviously I'm not a medical doctor or medical expert, but I have a hard time thinking they'll have any kind of sporting event in the in the state of New York for, for 2020. I think they got to shut that, you know, in any kind of large gatherings in New York, which is a hotbed of box of hotbed for the coronavirus, uh, in the, not only in the United States but in the world, I would have a hard time thinking they'll have any kind of sporting event in 2020 in uh, with a huge gatherings in um, in a huge crowd gatherings in uh, the state of New York. So I, I kind of rule that out. California is not as bad. Las Vegas, Nevada is not as bad too. But those still are two hotbeds, and uh, the casinos are shut down right now. And you know a lot of people might not be willing to go there to, uh, for a big fight either. So these these are some of the cities that I'm listing. And most of these cities are, are cities that um, you know they have you know substantial coronavirus cases, but they they've uh, done a good job of kind of um, keeping the numbers down and keeping the numbers from what they probably projected to be much worse. That's the state of Texas. Tennessee is not that bad. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia was in the top 10 at one time, but they're right outside the top 10, so they're one of the hot bids too, but not in the top five, so we're toward the uh, 10, 11 that they're uh, doing, and we'll see how they're looking in uh, June too, so it's just a couple of cities that I named, man, but if you got some other uh, places that could, uh, you think could possibly host that fight, leave your comments in the comment section and let JB Sports know what you think. This is JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend. I holler.